We're about to interview Kate Micucci. She's a lot of things rolled into one. She's a singer, songwriter, she's a comedian, um, and I'm also a huge fan of her work. I was outside the door, I'm like, I'm not gonna freak out. And then the door opened and then I freaked out. <laughs> Just, I'm like melting down. I'm melting down. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm, I'm Kate Micucci and uh, thanks for coming over. And uh, yeah, I, I am an actress and a musician. I do musical comedy with my uh, with my writing partner, Ricky Lindholm. We have a band called Garfunkel and Oates. I do a lot of voiceover on a bunch of different cartoons. I'm always just writing music and I'm, you know, always trying to make stuff, I guess. I'm, I'm a writer. I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm a tea drinker. Yes, you are. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's me. I, I, I do a lot of things. Sometimes I wonder if I'm doing too many things and I need to like pare it down. But I think I'm happiest when I'm doing all the things. So, and then, you know, there'll be months where I'm focused on one and then but I like to jump around. You know, I, I was an art major and um, and I was a, a theater minor. I, n none of the jobs I was going for required a resume that showed I went to school. Um, but the thing for me, I needed college for another reason, which was I think just to, to kind of grow up. I was a really young 18 year old in college when I first started. And I think like, I just needed to learn how to like grocery shop and like, drive a car on a freeway. And so, yeah, I think I, I needed school for that reason more than um, to get a degree that wasn't gonna get me a job. Originally, when I went to art school in Pennsylvania, I wanted to be a toy designer. I loved the movie Big, and uh, I thought, oh, that's the life, like making toys and living in a loft and having a trampoline. And so that was my path, and I was like, when I dis decided on that, I was like, okay, at least I have a goal, and that's what I'm gonna do. That idea of just having that that one goal, even if it's not the thing you end up doing, you're working towards something and that motion gets you to where the next thing's going to be. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a toy designer and I started sculpting a lot and I started um, really getting into puppetry. I was like, oh, maybe I do wanna do more performing because deep down I always wanted to be an actress, mm -hmm. but I was kind of shy and didn't wanna tell anybody that. And that's a funny, for me, it felt like a funny thing to say that's what I wanted to do. So I just really got into puppetry and then I was like, maybe, New York City and toy design isn't what I'm supposed to do. But I didn't know that Mattel was down the street from Loyola Marymount University. And it just so happened that this woman who was the head of Barbie went to my senior show at the campus and was like, you know, have you ever thought about being a toy designer? And I was like, that's crazy. Funny enough, I have. She goes, I really think that you might might be good. Would you like to interview at Mattel? And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna go see about this job. You know, they laid out what I would be doing and the salary I would make. And at that same time, I had gotten my first commercial audition. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try this other road. And um, lucky enough, I started doing commercials and it went really well in the beginning. So um, I never ended up working, you know, making toys. So I didn't have a plan. When I graduated, it was actually a really kind of one of the first times in my life where I would say I was a little bit depressed. I didn't know what to do. Like, I like I don't know what I'm doing with my day. I was like kind of really lost. It took a while to find that groove of like being a creative person, but I just was like, I'm gonna make this happen. So long story short, yeah, just have the next goal, have the thing, and it might not be the thing you end up doing for a long time, but it's gonna lead you to the next thing. For a while you thought you wanted to be a toy designer and then, and then the opportunity came yeah. And yet there was some voice in your head that said, it's not it. Yeah. I know that whole time, all those, <laughs> all those years I thought I was going to be a toy designer. I would have, I, to, to get that interview would have been it for me. And instead it was like, wait, I think I'm in a different place now. And you just really have to listen to your gut in those situations. Mm -hmm. You know, and who knows, I might've been so happy being a toy designer. I don't know. But I, I just, that decision at that moment felt like the right thing to do. How did you, how did you get from there to here? Oh, well, that's a very <laughs> long road. And I will say like, I still every day I'm just like, you know, I'm, I feel so, so fortunate to be where I am and the fact that I get to make a living doing what I love. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I really wanted to try acting. I, I knew nobody, that was the other thing. And I, I, I really didn't have any ins in any way. And then, I basically, I was babysitting, this is a kind of funny story, I was babysitting for this family in Venice and they were not uh, actors or anything. 
or in the industry, but their neighbor was a commercial casting director. And so I wrote a little note and left it in their neighbor's mailbox. And I said, I babysit your neighbors and I hear you might be able to give me some advice. Would you mind? And she was so nice. And she said, come to my office and, and let's, let's talk. And I mean, that's a good lesson right there is like, never be afraid to ask. You know, they might say no, but can't hurt to ask. And um, so she was so nice. And she said, you know, I think you should meet with this um, agent because uh, you would need an agent. And so uh, I met with him and then he said, well, you have you don't have a resume. And I was like, well, yeah, I don't have a resume, but can I at least like audition for you? So he gave me a Burger King commercial and I read it. I, like I went back to, to the lobby and I like studied it and I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then I said, okay, I'm ready. I'll audition. And I read it and he's like, hmm, yeah, I'll send you, for, I'll send you out, see how you do. And so that first commercial he sent me out for, I got a call back for. I didn't get it, but I got a call back. So it made him go, okay, she might, she might do okay. And then the second commercial, I lucked out and I got the job, oh, which is not, awesome. that it's, I, I was very, a lucky break in many ways. And then, yeah, I, I don't know. It was, it's been a, a slow process, but I think throughout all, all the way, I think one of the biggest things I've learned is that you have to make your own work. And so I was always, you know, my, my singing partner, partner, her name's Ricky Lindholm. We have a band called Garfunkel and Oates. And like, we were always like, we're always writing and we're always you know, trying out new things. And when you're 20, that's the time to go just try stuff. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Cause you might find something you never, never knew you'd even like, you know? So I personally have a lot of moments where I feel really unmotivated. There could, I could be surrounded by a ton of opportunities, but I don't know how to move. So how do you move past moments where you're feeling uninspired or not motivated? It's, that's such a good question. I feel like I, we all can relate to that in one way or another. And we, I think there's like patches of like, for me, I'll feel like there are, there's a week where I'm like, I can't stop making things. And I feel like I'm almost like on some crazy high or, and it's just like, I'm not sleeping as much and I'm just making things and it's so much fun. And then I'll go through times where I'm like, I am just like, I don't have it. Like, where is it? It's in there. But, uh, so I find that the best thing to do is to do, do something completely out of the ordinary. That like, get out of your zone, your, get out of your dorm room, get out of the, you know, like maybe it's like, go to a museum you would never think to go to, or like hang out with someone you haven't hung out with for a long time. Something that's just gonna give you new energy. Uh, often for me, it's like going to see a play that like something that's just like, oh, like however you can get inspired. And maybe it's not even related to anything you wanna do, it's just like, you know, might be going to watch a really dumb movie, but whatever's gonna get you out of the the loop of feeling like I, I stuck, you know? And even though I feel like I have done an okay job at that, I think um, I would have even gone for more more stuff. I remember right out of college, I wanted to um, to try to sing my funny songs at the, they had an open mic, mic night at the Laugh Factory. And I thought about it for years. I should have just done it. I mean, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have been ready and there's like everything happens Timing wise, is how it's supposed to happen, I suppose. But like, there are a lot of things where I'm like, oh, I can't do that. And I'm like, no, why not? Like, I think I would just go for everything. And whenever an opportunity arises, really just try to be open to it. She is where she's supposed to be largely because she had an instinct in that moment. Am I silencing that voice in my head that's telling me to chase something else? But at least I know that I'm not alone in going through it. To Road Trip Nation, make a goal and go for it. It will get you where you need to be. Also, careful driving this RV. Kate Nakuchi, the whole thing run. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> hey there, Ben from Road Trip Nation here, reigning office ping pong champion and event manager. We're glad you're here. Thanks for watching the videos. Make sure you hit the subscribe button over here and watch a few more. Oh, I think I hit, I think I hit, I think I hit. <laughs>